Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be learning about the third ventricle. To begin with, this is a left lateral view of the cerebrum showing the ventricles of the brain. The ventricles are a set of communicating cavities within the brain. These structures are responsible for the production, transport and removal of cerebrospinal fluid which bathes the central nervous system. In this video, we will be learning about the third ventricle that you see right here. Now this diagram shows the anterior view of the cerebrum with the four ventricles. So the third ventricle is one of the four fluid filled cavities comprising the ventricular system within the brain. It is a median cleft in the diencephalon between the two thalami and is filled with cerebrospinal fluid. Now let's look at the communications of the third ventricle. Antero superiorly on each side it communicates with the lateral ventricle through the interventricular foramen or the foramen of Monroe. This foramen is bounded anteriorly by the column of fornix and posteriorly by the tubercle of thalamus. Now postero inferiorly in the median plane the third ventricle communicates with the fourth ventricle through the cerebral aqueduct that you can see right here. Now concising the important points under the introduction to the third ventricle, the third ventricle is one of the four connected fluid filled cavities comprising the ventricular system within the brain. It is a median cleft in the diencephalon between the two thalami and is filled with cerebrospinal fluid. Looking at the communications, antero superiorly on each side it communicates with the lateral ventricle through the interventricular foramen that is a foramen of Monroe. This foramen is bounded anteriorly by the column of fornix and posteriorly by the tubercle of thalamus. Postero inferiorly in the median plane, it communicates with the fourth ventricle through the cerebral aqueduct. Now let's learn about the recesses of the third ventricle through this diagram. Now what are recesses? Recesses are the extensions of the cavity. So the recesses of the third ventricle are the suprapineal recess that you see right here, the pineal recess, the infundibular recess right here and the optic recess. And there is one more recess which is called the vulva. Now let us learn about the boundaries of the third ventricle through this diagram. Looking at the anterior wall, it is formed by the lamina terminalis, the anterior commissure and the anterior column of the fornix. Now looking at the important points under the recesses and boundaries of the third ventricle, the recesses are extensions of the cavity. These are suprapineal, pineal, infundibular, optic and vulva. Now the boundaries include the anterior wall, is bounded by the lamina terminalis, the anterior commissure and anterior columns of Looking fornix. at the posterior wall, it is formed by the pineal body, the posterior commissure and the cerebral aqueduct. The posterior wall is bounded by the pineal body, the posterior commissure, the cerebral aqueduct. Now looking at the roof of the third ventricle, it is formed by the body of the fornix and the ependyma lining the undersurface of the tela choroidea of the third ventricle right here. It is also formed by the choroid plexus of the third ventricle that projects downwards from the roof. Now at the junction of the roof with the anterior and lateral walls, there is the interventricular foramen that you see right here. Moving on to the roof, it is formed by the body of the fornix and ependyma lining the undersurface of the tela choroidea of the third ventricle. The choroid plexus of the third ventricle projects downwards from the roof. At the junction of the roof with the anterior and lateral walls, there are the interventricles. Now looking at the floor of the third ventricle, it is formed by the hypothalamic structures. That is the optic chiasma that you see right here, the tuber cinerium, the infundibulum, the mammillary body that you see right here, the posterior perforated substance and the tegmentum of the midbrain. Now at the junction of the floor with the anterior wall, there is the optic recess that you see right here. The floor is formed by the hypothalamic structures that include the optic chiasma, the tuber cinerium, the infundibulum, the mandibulary bodies, posterior perforated substance, tegmentum of the midbrain, Another junction of the flow with the anterior wall, there is the optic. Now looking at the lateral wall of the third ventricle, 
it is formed by the medial surface of the thalamus the hypothalamus and the hypothalamic sulcus that you see right here which separates the thalamus from the hypothalamus and this sulcus extends from the interventricular foramen to the cerebral aqueduct looking at the lateral wall it is formed by the following that is the medial surface of the thalamus the hypothalamus the hypothalamic sulcus which separates the thalamus from the hypothalamus the sulcus extends from the interventricular foramen to the cerebral now looking at the clinical anatomy of the third ventricle it is a narrow space which is easily obstructed by local brain tumors or by developmental defects the obstruction leads to raised intracranial pressure in adults and hydrocephalus in infants tumors in the lower part of the third ventricle give rise to hypothalamic syndromes Finally looking at the clinical anatomy the ventricle is a narrow space which is easily obstructed by local brain tumors or by developmental defects obstruction leads to raised intracranial pressure in adults and hydrocephalus in infants tumors in lower part of the third ventricle give rise to hypothalamic syndrome I hope you found this video helpful to get the notes of third ventricle as well as notes of other topics of anatomy physiology biomechanics psychology pathology and pharmacology visit my instagram page the link to which is given in the description below to get updates on my latest videos click on the subscribe button to get notifications tap on the bell icon thank you for watching